All right, hello, my friends, and welcome to another Brotato tier list. This time we're doing the classes. This is probably the single most requested video that I have had. People really want to see this, so I thought I should bring it to you. So for this class tier list, I'm going to be talking in detail about each class and how well it performs at getting you a win in Danger 5. I won't be considering the classes for Endless Mode or Challenge Runs in particular, so I'm going to be talking a little bit about how I'm going to be judging each class as we go. I'm going to be considering three things for the class. One, how easy is it to actually win in Danger 5? Two, how many different builds can you be successful with with this character? So if a character is relatively easy but has a very narrow and constrained build path, I'm going to be ranking it a little bit lower. And three, how intuitive is it to play this character? So a character that requires you to play in a significantly different way from how you are used to, or a character that requires a high burden of game knowledge in order to play successfully, or a character that requires you to build weapons that you wouldn't normally build, is going to rank lower than characters where you just take the natural weapon and go to town. To that end, I'm going to talk a little bit about how e I'm going to be judging each tier. S tier characters are going to be very easy to win with basically no matter what you do. As long as you go any sort of reasonable build, you should win with this character. A tier characters are either going to be slightly build constrained, so they're very easy with a specific weapon, or uh, slightly harder but much more open than the S tier characters. B tier characters probably have a narrow build path and also are more likely to uh, lose anyways. So a a good example of this is a character where you are almost always going to go slingshots on it and then still might lose, um, then that character is probably going to be B tier because typically you'll win, but you still have a chance of losing. C tier characters are particularly hard or have like a very specific trick to them, and D tier characters are going to be difficult and losable even for very experienced and expert players. They also will often require... Uh, only will only work with certain weapons or require pretty exacting build paths in order to succeed or finding specific items in the shop in order to make use of their abilities. I won't be telling you the exact stats for the characters, so if you want the exact stats, then just read along in the wiki. But in general, I'll be talking about how the characters work, so let's get right into it. The very first character is the Apprentice. Uh, this is also in alphabetical order rather than the order that it appears in the game. That's just because that's how this tier list is set up, uh, and I just found it online. So bear with me, and again, if you want to read along, you can sort the wiki by character name. So the Apprentice gets one of each damage whenever you level up, as well as one Engineering, but loses one HP rather than gaining one HP every time you level up. The Apprentice is a very powerful character and super strong in the late game, but has a weak early game. So overall, I think that the Apprentice is going to be a B-tier character. I think it works best with some very specific build paths. Um, typically, primitive weapons are required in order to win with this character. Uh, or in order to optimize this character. And while you can win with other weapons, even if you go sort of the best weapon, the the chances, there is still a chance of losing. Like you can build slingshots or spears on this character and still lose if you just don't roll enough maximum HP. So I think the Apprentice is a pretty solidly B tier character. The Arms Dealer. The Arms Dealer removes all of your weapons at the beginning of every shop, so you have to basically roll random weapons. You can bias the shop to roll specific weapons, and if you're interested in how to do this, definitely check out my Arms Dealer guide. I talk about how to gain specific weapons on the Arms Dealer, and it makes your runs much smoother. But that requires some pretty advanced game knowledge, as well as also just still being hard. And then also, you have to play differently every single wave with the Arms Dealer. I think the Arms Dealer is kind of the classic D-tier character, where it has a huge burden of knowledge, has a large element of randomness, and can still end up in no-win scenarios, even for expert players. The Artificer. The Artificer gets 175% uh, explosion damage for minus 100% normal damage, and these just add up. So 
explosive weapons basically get plus 75 percent damage it's a little weird how that interacts and when i do an artificer guide i'll, I'll talk a in a little more depth about that but effectively what this means is that you are forced into using only explosive weapons so you have a very constrained build path um, and when you do use explosive weapons you just get a minor bonus to explosive weapon damage for the cost of a minor loss in armor um, so the the artificer actually ends up being a character that has sort of basically no abilities in in play um, a character that has no abilities i'm gonna pretty much always just put in b tier i think so because it it should usually be winnable but has a constrained build path or can can still be losable for some uh for even quite experienced players. So the Artificer goes right into B tier. Uh, I, you will notice also that there is not an F tier, because of course you can win Danger 5 with every character, and I would reserve F tier for a character that you actually should avoid, because you can't win with that character, because it's not, not possible or very unlikely to win with that character. The Brawler. So Brawlers get a ton of attack speed. Um, they have a fairly constrained build path because they need to use unarmed weapons, and also many of the unarmed weapons for the Brawler are not good. But if you go Fists, it's one of the easiest characters in the game. So I'm going to put it in A tier just because you need to pick a specific weapon, but it's very easy if you pick that specific weapon. The Bull. So Bull gets no weapons and explodes. Um, there is a there are two items being Bloody Hand and uh, Blood Donation that make this character way way easier. So in that sense, it already requires uh, rolling kind of specific items. You also really need quite a lot of game knowledge, I think, in order to play this character because figuring out like how damage multiplies, managing your HP and regen per wave, I think is, is a really difficult thing for this character. I did do a class guide, so if you're struggling with this character, definitely go check that one out. Um, the bull, I think, is a D-tier character because it, it does get a lot of defensive stats, but it's so hard if you run into certain enemy combinations. Oh, another thing I'm going to be considering in this game is is whether certain enemy combinations can just kind of lock you out of the game. Um, I think the, the best example for this is going to be the Explorer, who struggles so heavily with Wave 14 that a Wave 14 Elite can just randomly lock you out of winning a lot of runs with the Explorer, and that's going to ding that character quite heavily when we get to it. Next up, the Chunky. So Chunky gets bonus max HP and bonus damage per max HP that you have, which is a, a huge advantage, but get can't use lifesteal, has lower regeneration, uh, can't use dodge, can't gain speed, but also can't lose speed, so that you, you win some, you lose some on, on that particular bonus, um, and also gets bonus consumable heal. The Chunky requires a quite different play style than other characters. It's good, but it changes your playstyle so much that I'm going to put it in C tier because I think you're typically your first run at Danger 5 with this character you're going to lose because you have to adjust your playstyle so much in order to play the, the Chunky. The Crazy. You are forced to use precise weapons but you're very strong if you use precise weapons. Um, the minus percent dodge is not an enormous penalty, and you get attack speed, you get extra weapons, you get extra range. The crazy, I think, is sort of a character with minor boosts compared to a zero uh, abilities character, and you're you're constrained to uh, very specific build paths. So I'm going to put it in A tier, because it's pretty easy to win with if you just go all knives or all scissors, but... Um, much harder if you don't go those two specific weapons and requires uh, knowing that as well. I think you could possibly put the crazy in B tier, but I think overall the knife build is strong enough that I'm going to put it in A tier. The cryptid is another one that has sort of a trap to it. So the cryptid's weapon selection is really important, and also you need to dodge trees, which makes it much harder to play. But if you do know how to play the cryptid, then it's going to be incredibly strong. Um, and you can see my cryptid build guide, where I got one of the best builds I've ever had in Brotato on during that guide. And I think that you can, if not reliably get a build that good, you can reliably get a very strong build for the cryptid. So I'm going to put it in A tier because it should be pretty easy to win with once you know the trick to winning with that character. 
The Cyborg. Cyborg is a really weird one, and one that I think some people sort of cruise to victory, and some people find very difficult, and that's because the the way that you have to think about that character is so different. Um, it also has all the problems that engineering builds normally have, which engineering builds are typically harder to win with than weapon builds. So I'm going to put the Cyborg in C tier because I don't think it's as bad as the D tier characters, but you have to really watch the the clock to understand when to switch your movement. You have to know how to switch your movement. It's not so hard to win with once you understand the character, but in general, I think that the, this character has such a high burden of knowledge to play that it's going to be quite difficult. The demon spends health, which means you're going to spend the first five or six waves at one HP, and that by itself is enough to make it D tier if you just have to have perfect dodging for the first uh depending on how greedy you are, maybe up to like 10 waves, the then that's just going to be an incredibly difficult character that even very experienced players will need quite uh, precise movement to win with. My demon guide, I talk about this quite a lot, um, and how you need to both build up a lot of HP, you also leave a lot of materials on the ground because you have to have such precise dodging that you can't go into crowds to pick up all the materials. So demon, I think, is just one of the hardest characters in the game. Uh, in terms of actual mechanical skill that it requires to, to win. The Doctor requires medical weapons, but it's basically like a super crazy. Uh, if you just go scissors on the Doctor, then it's very, very easy, I think, because um, you just get 100% attack speed, and the armor modifications is a less damaging power than the Crazy's uh, dodge power, so the, the Doctor is just a really strong character overall, but with a, a constrained build, so I'm putting it in A tier. The Engineer has a constrained build, but it at least is one that is sort of intuitive, although I will say that the fact that the game tricks you by having one of the two tools be a very bad weapon, if you try to build screwdrivers, uh, you are in trouble. Uh, typically, screwdrivers are hard to win with, and also the Engineer makes screwdrivers worse, because the the fact that the engineers' structures all spawn in the same place is a downside rather than an upside for the landmines. So the way that that works for the engineer is a is a is particularly difficult. Um, so that's a, I guess a little trick to playing engineer. And then of course it also has some of the problems of engineering builds. Although all the turrets spawning in the same place do make it easier to focus damage on things, so that mitigates some of the other problems that engineering builds have. But the fact that you can't control what you're damaging, that the damage is weak overall, and that you can't buy attack speed or crit chance or any of the damage steroid skills means that the engineer I think is a B tier character. It should be winnable most of the time, but you can definitely get in situations where you can't win. The entrepreneur requires you both to understand how to like roll a lot, um, but mostly requires you to hard roll for harvesting, so you can end up in situations where you just didn't find harvesting early, and that is makes it quite difficult. Um, the way that the shops work is something that you need to have a firm grasp on to play this character as well, so it has a pretty high burden of knowledge as well. Um, and in general, I think you can end up in no-win scenarios often enough. I don't think that the Entrepreneur is so difficult that it's a D-tier character, but I think it, it definitely belongs in C-tier. I already talked a little bit about the Explorer, uh, who does get some of the coolest builds in the game with the, the pocket factory builds or the landmine builds and so on. Um, but faster enemies is a huge downside and the way that you can sometimes just get locked out of the game if you end up with a horde or elite spawning on wave 14 and don't have a particularly over curve build, like a, a build that's sort of normal at, at wave 14 is very hard to beat elites or hordes with. So you have to play quite precisely if you happen to spawn a wave 14 elite on the Explorer. And that alone, I think, means that it is a C or D tier character. And then because it also has some um, economy difficulties minus materials from enemies, you have to play quite differently. You are probably constrained in your build. I'm going to put the Explorer in D tier, um, not because it 
isn't powerful because it is a very powerful character, uh, similar to the demon, which is is one of the best characters for challenge runs and endless runs and so on. Um, I'm not considering the character's power cap in this scenario. I'm considering how easy it is to win with. And the explorer, because you can randomly be locked out, it's one of the most RNG-dependent characters in the game. Uh, both because Pocket Factory is so good on it that you're looking for a specific item, and because of its interaction with Wave 14 in particular, making it very much more difficult. Farmer requires... Uh, a specific weapon. I think you're going to win with Pruner way more often than with other weapons on, on Farmer. Um, and even then, you're locked into kind of a bad weapon. The economy bonuses are nice, but don't usually make up for the material loss. So being locked into a bad weapon just to make up your economy. I think the Farmer is not as hard as the D-tier characters, but is one of the harder characters in the game because it's it's mostly just a worse character it's it's mostly just worse than a character that had no abilities would be the fisherman requires quite a heavy burden of knowledge good movement and dodging is locked into a very specific build um it is again one of the characters with some of the highest power caps in the game but you need i think to understand what weapons to build uh, very well and also be quite good at dodging and moving. You need to have a good build. You really need to have good uh, sort of economy management and risk reward management in this game in order to manage buying the right number of baits for each wave. Uh, you need to know about how the baits interact with boss waves and so on so there's quite a lot of burden of knowledge for the fisherman as well as requiring some pretty specific movement i think the fisherman is very hard and a, a d tier character again super powerful very very high power cap on this character and you're going to end up dealing thousands of damage with every attack but the the level of difficulty and sort of the percent chance of winning with this character are low and D tier. Uh, generalist is you get two melee damage, you, you get melee damage when you buy range damage, you get range damage when you buy melee damage, and you have to use three of each weapon. Uh, I think generalist basically is as close to a character with no abilities in this game as exists. It has uh, the a slight improvement to the shop in that you get to buy both damage types and and that is definitely makes more items um, profitable for you but the and the split weapons are a very slight downside but for the most part the generalist just works exactly the way any other character would work um, with no upsides no downsides for for most of your builds and for most purposes. So I'm going to put it right in B tier because, a, a, like I said, a character that has no upsides and no downsides I think is a B tier character. Ghost requires, I think you should understand the math behind dodging and effective HP, the math behind armor and effective HP. Um, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about this when I get to a ghost build, maybe with, uh, maybe in Halloween, we'll do the go the ghost guide sometime in October, or maybe sooner, depending on how soon I actually get to it. Um, but the the ghost, I think, has a very heavy burden of knowledge for the player because you really need to understand quite a lot of the math behind the um, the way that the game calculates damage and HP in order to do well with this character, I think, as well as constraining you to one of the worst weapon sets in the game, in the ethereal weapon. Um, you also can just randomly die, so basically the ghost is going to end up with a ton of effective HP, but effective HP is meaningfully different from actual HP in that, uh, let's say you have a 90% dodge chance, there's only a, a 1 in a 1000 chance you get hit three times in a row. But if you get hit th three times in a row on Ghost, you're instantly dead. So there is a, a significant element of randomness to this character, and sometimes you'll only be able to take two hits in a row, and so on. Um, so this, this character has a significant element of randomness to it, or requires perfect movement in order to mitigate that randomness. And typically, I think, 
you want to mitigate randomness on, in this game as much as you can. So the ghost is very, very hard. We're putting it in D tier. The gladiator. Uh, gladiator is a character that has basically huge bonuses, almost no downsides. Using six different weapons is a downside, but um, the natural build path for Gladiator will get you just a ton of bonus attack speed. So you can build pretty much any intuitive build with the Gladiator, and I think you're going to win pretty easily. So it's a, it, that's an S-tier character. The Glutton. Glutton gives you a bunch of explosion damage um, and gets you explosion damage when you pick up uh, consumables. The way that this works sort of baits you into trying to build around killing things with the consumable explosions, which is part of your damage, but n not all of it. You're going to have to build other things as well with this character. It also requires you to not take damage in order to build your explosion damage percent up. Um, or it locks you into pruners or um, specific explosive weapons. So it's a powerful character, but one that requires pretty precise handling in order to maximize its ability. Has pretty significant downsides, so I'm going to put it in C tier. Again, this is a very strong character that, that has a very high upside, but um, just in general for most newer players, it's going to be harder to win with than, than many other characters. The golem can't heal. Uh, I don't think we really need to talk too much about that. It it requires very specific builds, and um, it can't heal, so that's just really, really hard to win with. Uh, it's a D-tier character for sure. The hunter has some huge downsides. The max HP downside and not being able to use harvesting, also hurting your economy significantly, are enormous downsides and doesn't really get upsides. The The percent damage for range is basically not a non-factor. You end up with very little damage from that. Um, so the, the hunter is, is effectively a character that has only downsides, I think, or very, very minor upsides and very few uh, significant downsides and minor upsides. That said, the natural way to play the character is just to buy a lot of ranged weapons, and that's just good enough most of the time anyways. So I'm going to put it in C tier because it's worse than a default character, but it's not as bad as the, the D tier characters. The Jack. So Jack um, is one of the characters that I think is the most one of the most powerful characters, but also one of the hardest. So... It's really, really good for challenge runs, really good for endless runs, really good for um, 182% runs, and so on. Super powerful character, has some of the highest power cap around in the game, just because the, the extra materials from enemies and the extra damage to bosses are really nice, but the requirement to move pretty perfectly, and the fact that elites will often just one-shot you all throughout the game, um, this character is just really hard to play, so it's a it's a D tier character. I should also note that the game is better for having more characters in D tier. You don't want too many S tier characters in this game because you want new players to uh, to have some options for S and A tier characters, but you also want veteran players to have lots of options for challenging characters. So the the fact that i'm saying that this there are lots of c and d tier characters in this game is not a criticism of the game in fact i think that's that's one of the things that make this makes this game really good all right so the king the king requires that you understand the shop um, and how to i mean you have to know to combine weapons you have to play with a few uh, fewer weapons than you would otherwise but the the bonuses are um, the, the starting tier 2 weapon and the plus 50 luck is really nice. The downsides are significant, though, and minus max HP is such a huge downside. Also, not being able to buy tier 1 items is a pretty significant downside. I think the king is a C-tier character. Um, the You can win pretty easily with the king, and it's got a really strong late game, but the early game is weak enough that it, it definitely has downsides. The knight. So the knight just wants you to build melee damage and armor, and it gives you tons of additional uh, bonuses for having these things. Um, 
you can't use harvesting really, but you and your attack speed is worse, but you get tons and tons of damage for free, and you just buy armor, um, which is a great stat. Pretty much any build that you would reasonably want on the knight is going to get you there. I think the, the knight is a super easy, super smooth character that will just let you play through the game really quickly. Um, definitely an S tier character, and my pick for the easiest character to win with just once you have the right build, but also you can do other builds and it'll work just fine. The Lich. So the Lich main downside is that your damage is halved. You get tons of defensive stats, which is great, but losing out on a bunch of damage is definitely a problem. You can just build the Lich as a pacifist, though, and that's pretty easy to win with. Um, but you do need to kill some stuff in order to make money on this character. So unlike the pacifist, you don't you don't get to just ignore money completely. Um, overall, I think that the Lich is quite difficult, but not as difficult as the D-tier characters. I'm, I'm actually torn between C and D-tier. I'm going to put it in C-tier, but I think there is definitely an argument for a D-tier rating for the Lich, um, just because it does have some pretty specific build requirements as well. Um, no, I've talked myself into it. The, the fact is that you also need to understand how the shop how, you need to be quite disciplined in what you buy in the shop for the Lich, which makes it much worse as well. Um, and so an experienced player is going to have a much easier time with this character because they are more used to being disciplined in the shop, but a newer player is going to have a harder time with this character because anything that you buy that doesn't help the Lich's core game plan is much more punishing than for other characters. The Loud gets... Minus three harvesting at the end of the wave, which is definitely an economic penalty, but way more than made up for by the extra enemies and the extra damage. Um, loud is just huge advantages all around. You can build basically anything. You'll you'll win easily with this character. The Lucky, um, I think, has some pretty specific builds and also wants to find specific items. But 100 luck is an enormous advantage. Uh, and the minus attack speed is bad, but mitigatable. I think that the, the Lucky is kind of a C tier character. It's slightly worse than a, a no abilities character, but uh, because you really do want to find more baby elephants or cyber balls, those are help this character enormously. So when you're looking for only some specific items, I tend to think that, that the characters are weaker overall. But if you just build defensive stats and, and luck on this character, you'll win most of the time. The mage, like I talk about in my mage video, the mage is tricky and does attempt to bamboozle you by picking up the, um, by, by the intuitive weapon to build on mage, like the wand or other weapons that apply burning, are actually bad because those weapons don't stack. So the mage needs you to know to buy tasers instead of those weapons, so that's already a pretty high burden of knowledge, um, and then you're stuck with a, a sort of medium weapon. I think that the mage overall, though, once you know that you can buy tasers on it, is pretty easy to win with, so I'm going to put it in um, B tier, I think. I was going to put it in A tier, but you can still lose uh, even with the taser build, whereas I think the A tier characters are hard to lose with if you have the right build, um, and the S tier characters are hard to lose with, with any build. And I should also say, I don't judge you if you have found any of these high, the characters I'm placing in high tiers, difficult, uh, because everyone has different play styles. So these are going to, some characters that I find very easy are going to be much harder for other people. For example, some people vastly prefer ranged weapons or vastly prefer melee weapons, and so characters that require specific ones of those are going to be harder for those players. If you are someone who just really likes only range builds, the gladiator is going to be tough for you, for example. Um, so th there's set definitely some variance to how people are going to approach this based on their personal play style. The masochist just wants you to build defensive stats. Um, it's got several build paths that work really well, I think, uh, and comes with tons of defensive stats to start with. The 
you have to get damaged thing re does require you to play a little differently. So I'm not going to put it in S tier because it, it does require an adjustment to your playstyle. But I think once you sort of grok the mechanics of the masochist and and understand how to just like manage your HP a little bit, you're going to win most of the time with this character, and it's very strong. Just so many free stats on that character that it's hard for it to be uh, too difficult. The multitasker, I think you can pretty much just build anything on the multitasker. You basically get double damage, so the minus 5% damage for every weapon you have is not particularly bad. Um, because you, are, by the time you've capped out on weapons, you have also in doubled the amount of damage that you've got. Uh, the multitasker is weakest when you have six weapons, because then it is the furthest from a normal character's build um, in terms of overall damage, but you get plus 20% damage that mitigates it. Uh, so the masochist is, at worst, a character that's B tier, because it would just be minus 10% damage, which would be a totally reasonable... Um, like, the, the masochist basically can't be worse than B tier, or masochist, the multitasker, can't be worse than B tier, because a character with no other abilities than minus 10% damage would just be a B tier character. That, that would not be a bad enough penalty to bump you down a tier. Um, and the 12 weapons is actually an enormous bonus. You get tons and tons of stats. You can have two synergy bonuses. You get many, many attacks. Hugely powerful character. I think you can build basically any combination of 12 weapons on this character, and you're going to win very easily. So I'm putting that right up into S tier. The Mutant gives you triple levels and plus 50% item price. That sounds pretty simple, but I think requires quite a lot of game knowledge. So the mutant is a character that works out, economically speaking, to being a little worse than most other characters, and also requires a lot of game knowledge. I'm going to put it in C tier. The old has smaller map, but reduced enemy speed. You also get reduced your speed, but if reducing your speed and the enemy speed is good overall, because uh, as humans, we have reaction time, so if you slow the whole game down, you... Uh, I guess, apologies to any robots that are watching this, although you do technically also have reaction time, so take that, robots. Um, the... If you slow the whole game down, that's good for, for the human player because it makes the burden of your reaction time lower. Um, as well, you get economic bonuses. Minus 10% enemies is a big disadvantage, but the smaller map is a big advantage because you kill a higher percentage of the enemies every wave. I think that the old is an A tier character. It's probably not as easy to win with as the S tier characters, but you can build more or less any... Um, anything on this character. It's great with engineering, it's great with weapons of any kind. Just a great character overall. The one-armed is all downside. Uh, very difficult character. Has pretty constrained build paths because you have to have a weapon that multi-attacks stuff um, and also works way worse with melee weapons than it does with ranged weapons and so on. Uh, I think that this character might be the hardest in the game. Um, it's certainly the character with the lowest ceiling of any character, so you're, you're going to end up with the weakest overall builds uh, at the end of the game on the one-armed. Um, but it does have some pretty cool boosts. It's really nice if you are combining it with another character in the uh, uh, GMO mod, but other than that, it doesn't have a lot of use for just trying to win Danger 5. Put it in D tier. The Pacifist, the natural build for the Pacifist is the Hand, and that's the one that you should build. So it, it does have a constrained build, but at least it's a very intuitive constrained build. Um, if you just run around with hands and just bonk the enemies away, I think build defensive stats, you should win most of the time on Pacifist. I'm going to put it in A tier, because it's it has a constrained build, but it's intuitive and powerful. The Ranger is... The max HP modifications are definitely a real downside, um, but the uh, ranged damage boosts are definitely an upside. Can't equip melee weapons is actually an upside because it, it, make, it improves your shop because they don't show up in the shop, which means that you end up with a much better shop overall than 
other characters. Uh, you only find weapons that you want, so that's actually a, a pretty significant advantage. And that's true for any character that has you can't equip X weapon. They don't show up in the shop at all, so that that makes your shop better. The only exception to this is the generalist who still gets the weapon of both kinds, even if you're maxed out on one kind. Um, overall, I think I would say that the ranger has downsides that more or less match its upsides, so we're going to put it in B tier. The renegade, just any projectile weapon is going to go nuts on the renegade. Uh, you end up with, as long as you just build all the tier 1 items and the game says, hey, build this one, you don't have it yet, and build a bunch of weapons, you're just going to end up with some truly nonsensical looking build that will do very well, so Renegade's S tier. The saver is, you get extra harvesting and you get, you have to hold materials, so you end up worse in terms of overall damage and economy than other characters because of the extra price of items that ends up being very, very expensive over the course of the game. Um, you also have to do a lot of math, I think, on the saver in order to sort of maximize your piggy bank every wave and make sure that you are not um, spending out on items that don't give you a benefit. You also lose out on every percent damage item because buying them costs you percent damage and often that exceeds the percent damage you'd be getting from um, the actual item itself. I don't think it's as difficult as the D tier characters, but it's definitely uh, one that has heavy game knowledge requirements and also just overall a very difficult character to play. The sick. So sick gets 25% bonus lifesteal. Lifesteal is usually the best way to heal. Um, and 12 max HP. Takes one damage every second. Uh, as long as you use sort of any weapon that will attack relatively frequently on the sick, this is all upside. The one damage per second is, with basically any form of healing, easily mitigated. So the sick, you should be able to build just about anything on and win pretty easily. Put in that in S tier. The soldier. So the soldier, I think, has one of the greatest disparities between knowing how to play the character and not knowing how to play the character. Once you know that you can just tap the movement keys, the soldier is all upside, right? So the soldier, I think, is an A tier character sort of masquerading as a much lower tier character for, for players that don't know that you can just tap the movement keys. Um, also probably significantly harder on mobile. I, if someone who plays on mobile can confirm that, but I'm guessing that you can't as precisely input very small movements on mobile, maybe with a stylus or something. Um, so that will also make it much harder to, to play soldier. Overall, though, once you do have the advantage that you can just tap the movement keys and then you're just all upside, the soldier is going to be very easy to win with any ranged weapon. I'm going to put it in A tier because there's that knowledge leap and you do you are constrained to ranged weapons and so on. Also, the plus knockback is actually a pretty real downside, but overall I think the soldier is just going to be easy for most players once they know you can just tap the movement keys. The speedy gives you uh, extra speed and extra damage for speed. Um, that's a huge bonus. The minus three armor is a downside, but the minus armor when standing still is only a downside against like one or two elites. I think pretty much any melee build on the speedy is going to be great. Um, and of course, bonus move speed is nice. Once you get up to a certain level of bonus move speed, though, the game does get quite a bit harder because it's actually harder to precisely control where your character is going. Um, and if you're using like mouse movement or playing on mobile, then you're going to have uh, difficulty with that as well because it's much easier to end up accidentally standing still with those control schemes. With movement keys, you'll never accidentally stand still, but you will end up... Uh, sometimes moving too far and accidentally tagging yourself on at some enemies. So overall, I think this character requires enough game knowledge and has enough pitfalls that I'm going to put it in B tier, but it's also just very powerful and, and in terms of actual mechanics, it's only upside, but the 
the pitfalls of the character are definitely present. The streamer gives you uh, is one of the more complicated characters. It gives you money while you're standing still. The more money you have, the less damage you do. And, but if you're moving, you gain damage and attack speed. You also move slower the more money you have. So you have to really manage your income. I think the streamer is the longest guide I've done so far. Uh, because I talk so much about the mechanics of the character. And have to talk about a lot about each particular wave so you need to have quite a lot of game knowledge i think it's also the guide that took me the most tries to do um so definitely taking that into account and also just even if you get everything right on the streamer it's not actually that much better than a normal character so uh, i i think this is just a, a very easy d tier character the well-rounded of course is all upside you get five max hp great bonus five speed that's a great bonus and starting with eight harvesting is huge that's going to smooth your economy out throughout the whole game um of course the the well-rounded is an up is an s tier character because you can build anything on it and do very well and it's all upside it it's meant for new players of course so it, it's not surprising that it's an s tier character but uh it's definitely one of the best characters in the game and I like it that way. I think that, that one of the best characters in the game should be the sort of introductory character. I think that's one of the things that's really good about Brotato's design. And finally, the Wildling. So Wildling, you are stuck with low-level weapons and have to use primitive weapons, um, but you get 30% lifesteal with those primitive weapons. So this sounds like it's uh, better than it is, because 30% lifesteal is really good. But many primitive weapons benefit a lot from leveling up. So sticks get extra damage as you level them up. Slingshots get extra bounces as you level them, level them up. And that's one of the best weapons with um, lifesteal as well. So that's one of the ones that has the highest upside when you actually use the class's mechanics. On the other hand, level 2 spears are just fine. Like... If you just build spears, you're going to end up having capping out your weapons really early. That'll improve all of your your shops because you won't have to be looking for weapons. Um, so overall, I think this character is just better than a base character, but does have some pretty significant uh, build constraints and can trick you because if you build slingshots and don't get enough uh, bounces or whatever... Um, that can be a real downside. I'm going to put it in B tier because I don't think it's actually that much different from a character without any abilities. So just to kind of recap, I think you'll see that the the general theme here is that characters that start with a lot of defensive abilities show up in S and A tier because they're the easiest ones to win with, or characters that just have way more stats than uh, normal characters either by having a huge economy like the loud or by just having huge boosts to their stats like the soldier and the characters with the most complex mechanics also show up at the near the bottom of the list like streamer like golem like lich um which makes sense and is exactly what you want for the game so one thing that i think is kind of fun to to look at in terms of how this tier list shakes out is that it speaks really well of the class balance and game design principles that were used in Brotato because the less complicated classes sort near the top and the more complicated classes sort near the bottom. So that's, that's what you want from a uh, character design like this. All right, my friends, that's, this has been the ultimate Brotato class tier list for Danger 5 as presented by Cephalopocalypse. As always, I hope that you have enjoyed this video, and if you have, do feel free to comment, leave comments, that helps a ton with the algorithm, like the video, because ditto, and subscribe to my channel for more of this and other strategy game content. Thank you for watching, my friends, and I'll catch you next time.